What is Boyle's Law and what is its clinical relevance when it comes to respiration? Well, first we need to define what Boyle's Law is. Boyle's Law states that as the volume of a container increases, the pressure within that container decreases and vice versa. So as the volume of the container decreases, the pressure of gas within that container increases. So what that means is there's an inverse relationship between the volume of a container and the pressure of gas inside of that container. So if we were to write that down shorthand, we'd state that as we increase the volume of a container, it results in a decrease of gas pressure within that container. And vice versa, decrease the volume equals increase in pressure. So let's first graphically describe what that really means and then we'll refer to what it means clinically. So if we were to draw up a container, and let's just say we were to put a piston in this container, And inside of this container, we have gas particles. Let's just say we have oxygen inside of this container. Let's just say we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 gas particles of oxygen. 20 oxygen molecules within this container. And we were to measure the pressure inside of this container. Let's just say that the pressure is 10 kilopascals. Now, don't really worry about the units here, but remember that it's 10, okay? 10 kilopascals. All right, now let's just say, so there's a particular volume of this container, all right? Now let's just say that we were to push down on this syringe. Now it's a closed container, remember? This is very important, it's a closed container. What if we're now to push down on this syringe, what would happen? So we've pushed down on the plunger, and what ends up happening is how many molecules of oxygen did we begin with? 20. We now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 oxygen molecules still within this container, but they now have less space to move around. So let's think about this for a second. Let's think about what pressure actually is. When we talk about blood pressure, for example, we talk about the force that the blood puts on the walls of those vessels. When we talk about pressure in this case, the pressure of gases, again, it's the force that these molecules put on the walls of its container. So here where we have a larger container, these 20 oxygen molecules, as they bounce around, they're bouncing off the walls, bouncing off each other, they are putting some sort of force on the wall of that container and that's measured as pressure. In this case, it was 10 kilopascals of pressure, okay? As it's bouncing around. Now, think about as we decrease the volume of that container or decrease the size of that container, we still have 20 molecules bouncing around, but they have less room to move around. So does that mean statistically, are they, is it going to be an increased likelihood of these molecules hitting walls and hitting each other or a decreased likelihood? What's well, going to be an increased likelihood? So you have more of these reactions in which it bounces off the walls, bounces off each other. And what this does is it increases the pressure inside of that container because again, pressure is going to be a measurement of the force that's generated by these molecules inside the container on the walls of that container, okay? So this is that inverse relationship. Decrease the volume of a closed container, increase the pressure of the gas within that closed container. Now, what does this have to do with respiration and breathing? Well. Let's think about if this container was open at one end. All right, let's look at the first syringe. We have gas, 20 oxygen molecules, and let's say that out in the atmosphere, we're also going to have some oxygen molecules. Now, with this syringe or plunger not moving, the amount of gas inside of that syringe compared to the amount of gas outside would end up balancing each other out, okay? Because we know that as these oxygen molecules are bouncing off the walls, there's going to be some prob probabilistic likelihood that it's going to bounce outside of the syringe. And the same notion, 
some are going to bounce in to the syringe and over time this exchange will be equivalent and the pressure inside of that syringe will balance out with the pressure outside of that syringe if you were to just leave it and not even touch that plunger, okay? So it balances itself out. Now think about what happens when you push on that plunger. As you push down, think about it, as you push down, you're decreasing the volume and increasing the pressure, so you're increasing the amount of times that these molecules bounce off the walls and increase how many of these oxygen molecules are going to bounce out of the syringe. You're going to get an increased likelihood of oxygen molecules bouncing outside of this syringe. And what does that mean? It means that as you push down, you force air or oxygen out of the syringe into the surrounding atmosphere. Now this makes sense. If you were to get a syringe and you put your thumb on the end of it and push on the barrel of that syringe, what's going to happen is you feel that pressure pushing onto your thumb. You remove your thumb, the gas flows out. Now what that's telling you is that pressure always moves down a concentration gradient. Always moves from high pressure to low pressure. Always from high pressure to low pressure. Okay, a high pressure system is moving in, they may say when, they, when you're watching the weather. It's always gonna go from a high pressure system to a low pressure system. Now what does this mean when it comes to respiration? Well, think about what we have. If we were to compare this syringe to our respiratory system, well, let's take a quick look. If I were to draw a very simplistic version where we've got our trachea, coming into our lungs. Now obviously we have a left and right lung, but this is what we've got here and we're going to have our pleural cavity and we're going to have our ribs either side. Obviously we have more than six ribs and we're going to have our diaphragm down the bottom as well. Let's color that diaphragm in red because we know it's skeletal muscle. And we also know that our External intercostals are going to be lining the outside of our ribs here. And these are the two muscle groups I want to focus on first of all. Now, when you, so when you take a breath in, what's actually happening is that diaphragm contracts and moves down. Because it's this dome shape. As that diaphragm contracts and moves down, what happens is it opens up, it increases the volume of this thoracic cavity. Now remember Boyle's Law, as you increase the volume, you're going to decrease the pressure. And that means the pressure inside of the lungs is going to be less than the pressure outside of the lungs. And I also told you that gas likes to go from high to low. So if the pressure in the lungs is lower than the pressure outside, what's going to happen? Gas will inevitably be dragged in to the lungs. That's how we inspire, that's how we bring this air in. Now we've also got our rib cage with our external intercostals attached and they can also contract too. Now if they're contracting, they're going to be contracting up and out. If they contract up and out, they're going to further increase the volume of this thoracic cavity, making the pressure inside of the thoracic cavity even lower which means there's now a greater differential of the pressure from outside to inside. So it's gonna be higher outside compared to inside and gas always goes from high to low. So more gas will rush in. So what I'm basically telling you is the more muscles we recruit to increase the thoracic volume, the more air we will inspire into our lungs. Now obviously when we relax these muscles, the volume will decrease and that air will be pushed straight back out. This is the clinical relevance of Boyle's Law.